and you, Father, are staging things in this world. You are God. And even though the enemy is running rampant and causing all kinds of destruction, disease, and harm, your plan will not be foiled. You will unveil your power and your mighty right arm, as it says in Isaiah. There is no one too far that your mighty arm cannot deliver. We ask you, Father, in Jesus' name, that you will make us a praying people, that you'll make us faithful people, that you will touch these that are sick, whose names we've mentioned, and that you will make us a people full of faith, believing in your promises, relying on your word. We need you, Father. We need your Holy Spirit in our lives. We need you, Father, as I read from Ephesians, when we don't know what to pray or what to say, when so many people in this house and so many people online right now, I've been there. They're at a point in their walk with you, Father. They don't know what the next step is. They, they just know that they're far from you. But you are able to deliver, Father. You are waiting for us to come to you with the right heart. And that's all we've got to bring. And you will come a vast dif- distance and deliver us. Heal these people. Heal our hearts and challenge us with the word today that we're bringing, Father. From your word, may your Holy Spirit be in this place. May you own us completely and wholly in Jesus' name. Amen. So back to Church Sunday is the theme today. It's um, We're one of many churches, thousands of churches in this nation and around the world that has a theme about Back to Church Sunday. It is a theme to bring people to church. It's a push to get people into church. And we have studied, haven't we, Pastor, for years on ways to do it. We've got people here that were on Wednesday nights. How many Wednesday nights did we study about ways to reach the world? Right? We spent weeks. I mean, if you took those hours, it would be weeks that we spend if you added them up as a church trying to figure out how to reach people. The churches that are growing in our land are churches that are doing a really good job of touching people. And we think that's a wonderful thing. But there's something more important than touching people. It's touching God. Because if we focus wholly on, completely on how to please people, how to make everything entertaining, pleasant, easy, there's nothing wrong with those things. But those are not the end, but a means to the end, right? Churches around this nation, as I looked and thought and read... Um, There's going to be two places in the scripture, and I I want us to go there. Um, First, let's look at Acts chapter 2, verse 42. This is one of two places in the scripture that churches are going to go to today, and they're going to preach this, and they are going to push for this. They're going to push to have people doing these things, and that's wonderful. It's very important to do what we're about to read. It says in Acts 2, verse 42, it says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. So there's a picture of what the church was doing whenever the Holy Spirit showed up and and the disciples in Acts were told by the Lord Jesus to stay in Jerusalem until they were endued of power from on high. And they hung out and they did what the Lord said. They were in an upper room for ten days. And then on that tenth day, the Holy Spirit showed up. They had to wait. And the Holy Spirit showed up and they were endued with power. They come out on the streets. They're speaking in tongues. People are understanding what they're saying. He's speaking in other dialects and other languages. People's hearts were cut when Peter speaks and preaches the word that it is Jesus that you have killed, who is the Savior of the world. And the Holy Spirit cut their hearts and they said, what must we do to be saved? And the church just exploded, just blew up, right? And when that happened, we see what began to happen in the church in in chapter 2. That's just one part of what was happening. We can read in there further that we can read that... Fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Man, I want to see wonders and signs in the church. I want to see the sick healed. I want to see buckets, loads of people come here who nobody else loves, that everyone's given up on. The people that I'm telling you, Pastor knows this, at Oasis, we're called for those people. People have come into this house for years, and it's blessed my heart. They come in here and say, 
You always get these people nobody else wants. Yep, that's who our people are. That's what we want. We want those people. But you know, let's read further what happens that signs and wonders were done through the apostles. Now all those who believed were together and they had all things in common. Look what happened in their hearts. They sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. So we want all those things to happen. But Pastor, as I consult with him about today, because we, we felt that we both wanted to come up and, and share what is the Holy Spirit saying? And he was saying the same thing in our hearts to when we come together, that this emphasis is the Holy Spirit. It's not all these things that happen because those things only happen because of who? The Holy Spirit, right? We want to see all these things happen, but they're not going to happen without the Holy Spirit, right, Pastor? You know, uh, when Peter began to speak after this great sign happened in the upper room and men began to speak in their own language and they could hear them in other languages right so that would be that would mean if someone was in here from 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 France and they spoke French and and I was from you know of course the United States to speak English and someone else was from Spain and they spoke Spanish we would all be declaring the goodness of God, but I could hear this brother speaking in his own language and understanding what he is saying in French. He could hear me speaking in English and not knowing English, but understanding me speaking and glorifying God. And then we could both hear someone else speaking in Spanish and hear them glorifying God. That is something that only the power of the Holy Spirit can do. And the purpose of that is that all men would glorify God. That all men would have this one thing in common, that whenever, no matter what language, tribe, nation, tongue you come from, that you would all glorify God. That is the power of the Holy Spirit, is that we all would be able to declare the goodness of God, the power of God, uh, in our language, right. to articulate it in our language. And not only that, let's see what happens here. I want to show you, Pastor Zach was, went down a little further. I want to go back up a little bit. He talks about the heart of the people, things being manifested in the heart of people where they begin to have all things in common. And they begin to share their, their goods with one another, their finances, the things that they had. See, let's, let me show you this real quick. Verse 17, Acts 2. Peter is talking, and he is saying, that this is what Joel prophesied. This, these men are not drunk. This is what was prophesied. In other words, this is the word of God. This is what God has already said is going to happen, and it's coming to pass. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, let me read what it says up here because you might be, have a different version in mind, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions and dream, and old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, see there's no discrepancy in gender, servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood, fire, and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The power of the Holy Spirit is for the purpose of the salvation of men. Amen. The power of the Holy Spirit falling, the purpose of the Holy Spirit is to point to who? Jesus. That's the purpose of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit in our lives points to Jesus. He points to Jesus for us, and he points to Jesus for everyone else. Right. But when the power of the Holy Spirit fell, and Paul, ben, um, Peter, began to declare to these men what had happened. I'm trying to get down to it here. Peter 
Peter said to them in verse 38, And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. Listen, when people begin to question who the Holy Spirit is and what the purpose of the Holy Spirit is, the purpose of the Holy Spirit is for salvation. And how do you get to that point? You repent and be baptized. And I was, I was telling Pastor Zach this morning that so many of us, we, we don't want to commit everything to the Father. We want to... We want to get our feet wet. We want to see if the water's just right. We want to say if if there's if it's time for me to do it. I've got other things that I still want to do. I don't want to be tied up with this. I, I got time to, to live and to just be myself for a while before I commit my way to the Lord. I'll go to church. I'll be saved. Amen. I'll say the quote unquote sinner's prayer, and I'll be I'll become a Christian and a believer. But I'm going to continue doing what I want to do. See, I heard a story this morning at 1 o'clock in the morning when I was listening to the word. Francis Chan tells a story of a guy who, 33 years old, died in his sleep. And he had a wife that he's been married to for 10 years. And they were looking forward to being parents and having a, you know, white picket fence, white house, you know, what we all dream of when we get married. But he died in his girlfriend's bed at 33. And he was a member of the church. He was a Christian. At least he was a Christian on the outside. See, he had, he had, done the things that Christians do. He had said the things that Christians say. He read the book that Christians read. He sang the songs that Christians say. But somewhere in his heart, somewhere in his life, obviously, he had not fully committed his way to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he was living on his own strength, mm -hmm. living on his own character. I know in this house today it would be crazy for me or Pastor Zach to believe that there's not issues in each one of our lives that if it's not for the power of the Holy Spirit we drift away that we struggle with that we have issues in our own heart we just sang a song that says I'm no longer a slave to fear the question is, is are there things in your life that you're still a slave to the only way that you're going to break free of that is that you find your anchor in Jesus Christ right. by the power of the Holy Spirit. What do you think that man was saying when he stood before the throne of God? See, he is the author and the finish of our faith. We don't know the day or the hour. You don't have time to say, Oh, I've got things to do. Oh, I've got other things I want to live and do. So you've got to commit your way fully to the Lord. You've got to go all in for Jesus. And the only way you can do that is by the power of the Holy Spirit. He draws you, and you can't do it in your strength. You have to surrender and say, Lord, I know these areas. I know these ugly things about me that no one else knows. And I need you to keep me in you because I will be eternally lost without you. So you're saying that people can go through motions. Absolutely. And that's a temptation to every Christian life is to go through the motions, to be distant from God. It's the, the enemy defeats us in our minds. And we begin to, my brother likes to say, let's keep the main thing the main thing. You ever heard that That's phrase right. before? My brother likes to say that because what we get off as church people and as Christians is exactly what he's talking about. Hey, man, I've crossed my T's and I've dotted my I's 
and I'm going to heaven because I said this prayer or I sit in a pew on Sundays, but we're distant from God. And, and we can even as a church take that further like I'm trying to say to you from, from uh, Acts 2 and then we're going to look at Hebrews 10 where we want this continuance. We want to see the growth. People are in churches today pushing for that growth. But see, what Pastor just said to you is we have to go look at what the Holy Spirit has to do before we can have that. The interesting thing is what he just read to you, which goes from the book of Joel, at that, in front of that, is actually over here in Hebrews 10. Look with me at Hebrews 10, the other area that a lot of churches are going to be preaching today with Back to Church Sunday. Go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse um, 24. The interesting thing is, God's Word is perfect, and it's showing us something, but we're not seeing the whole thing because we live lives of, as Pastor preached, he started this on a series of um, soundbite, soundbite Christianity. We say things and we think things about this much, and we treat God's Word that much too. We look at that portion that we want in our lives. We want to be right with God, or so we think, but we don't go deeper. And we don't go further because it's going to cost us. Because as he said, he came to take everything from us. He has come to take everything from the church. That he might give back to us what he wants us to have. So verse 24, Hebrews 10 verse 24. This is being church, preached in churches all across the land and internationally today. It says, and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more, as you see the day approaching. That capital D means the day of the Lord Jesus Christ, the return of Christ. So people want us to stir up each other. There's another thing. The church is saying, I want this to happen. And I think in our individual lives, we want these things to happen, and we become focused on that. But what happens before that? If you turn earlier in that chapter to verse 16... Look what it says. The same reference to Joel. It's interesting that I'm trying to make a point and make it understandable that in churches today, in Back to Church Sunday, I'm saying this again for redundancy because it helps me and I hope it helps you. People are pushing for us to have these things happen and they're preaching these verses. But if you don't go before that and have the Holy Spirit, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Because what's it say again? Verse, six, the whole, fifth, verse 15, the Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. He said before, this is the covenant I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds, and I will write them. Then he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now where there is remission of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. As we push in churches and individual lives to serve God, so much of that pushes us trying to do things in and of ourselves. And that's why churches are empty. If we think about what we want to have happen as Christians in this church and in this body, we want people to come in, we want their hearts to be changed, we want these things to happen. And you know what we do? We build man-made techniques into it. And there's nothing wrong with having some techniques. But we must ask for the Holy Spirit to do what He said, to make this covenant in our hearts. We must depend upon Him every day, all day long, to make the covenant within us, to make a covenant, not a covenant that we have to keep out of law, because we've been studying that, right, in Romans. We don't follow law. We're not under law. We are under grace. And that grace by the Holy Spirit is going to help us. Amen? Jump in whenever you want, sir. You know, I was just, just sitting here just listening to the Word and just thinking, you know, how we think it's an, it's an, all, it's an end all when we say a, say a prayer of salvation. You won't find it in the scripture where there is a sinner's prayer. You won't find it in the scripture, a sinner's prayer. What you will find in the scripture is the word saying repent. The word saying be baptized. 
the word saying, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord will be, shall be saved. The word of God saying, work out your own salvation in trembling and fear. The word of God telling us, now, work out your own salvation. Let me stop right there. That doesn't mean that you're striving in and of yourself to do it. It means that you're walking after the things of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he is revealing things in your heart that are issues between you and him that you have to acknowledge and say, Lord, I need this out of my life. How many of you have got things that cloud up your relationship with God? Amen? We all have things that cloud up, that murk up our relationship with God. We all have our own tendencies. James says we're enticed by our own lust. That we have a way that we kind of go on our own. I know I can be um, uh, I know I can my words can sometimes be smart and, and 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 not as tender as they should be my my family knows this not that i'm cussing my family out or anything like that but what i i know that my words can be i can be a smart aleck sometimes when it comes to the way i say things that's a tendency that i had that i'm aware of guess what they they can point it out but is that going to change it in me? What's, what's going to have to happen in my heart? The Holy Spirit's going to have to say, hey, buddy, you've got to get this thing out of your life because that's not a way that I desire for you to the model a Christ-like life, Christ-led life in front of your children, in front of your family. If anyone knows how you live, it's your family. Yeah. If anyone knows if your walk lines up with your talk, it's your family. Right. Amen? If anyone knows the small things that you need to get a hold of, it's your family. Amen? That's right. So we can put on a good face in front of others. But when we roll it back, it's the Holy Spirit that we need to say, Lord, those things in me that are not of you, that, are, that, are, that I'm bent toward, get that stuff out of my life. I surrender it to you so that I can have it out of my life. And let me tell you, some of you, I'm not picking. I'm just pointing out some of the things that, that are, are uh, evident. Some of you trust too much in the opinions of men. You look for them. You seek after them. When it comes to your image, you desire for someone to acknowledge those things. And I'm telling you, that is a lie of the enemy for you to get over and away where you're worried about what people think about how you look. Because there's only one person that matters when it comes to who you are to him, and that's Jesus. Right. Amen? Right. And if we go out trying to please others, we'll be deceived by the enemy thinking that somehow there's something good in that. Right. Because we're, we're desiring the accolades of man. We're desiring the applause of man. God hates a man who seeks to be pleased by men. Amen? God doesn't want us to have to be seeking men or words or opinions of others that please us. How many of you know we live, we, we're living in a time right now that is divided politically in our country? How many would say that those things, you've seen those things show up in your own personal life? Anybody honest enough to say that? that you see those things manifest in your life because of the way that you look at things. What you get, let me tell you how you got there. You begin to put weight in the opinions of men. That's right. Keeping your own. You begin to seek and to put weight in opinions of men. But the Holy Spirit is what checks you. And if you've been checked, you know it's the Holy Spirit that says, hey, don't do that. The Word says this. And the word, the Holy Spirit will always point back to the word of God. It will always bring us back to what the word says because Jesus is the word of God. Right. So it will always brings us back to that. So that's what I, I, I'll say one more thing is, and, and that is this. When it comes to uh, uh, an ideology, all of those things, how, how our political systems and the way that man thinks, all of that's going to fall. That's right. None of that's going to last. 
Only the word of God is going to last. That's right. So that's what we need to, that is, if there's anything we need to gravitate to, it's the word of God. Because in the end, that's the one thing that I want to be standing with, is the word of God. Amen? I don't want to be, I don't want to be entering into the kingdom of God with an issue in my heart towards someone because of the way they believed about something. Mm-hmm. Right. I want to be entering into the kingdom of God knowing that even though I disagreed with them, I put my trust in you, Father, and I sought, the, I sought you for them. Amen? Because if you want to see change in others, where do you first have to see change? In you. Mm-hmm. And how does that happen? through the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit revealing unto us the things in our heart. Revealing, and Deuteronomy, is it chapter 12, 29? I'm not sure. The the Bible says that the secret things belong to God. It's the secret things that belong to God. And then what God has revealed to us become, they become ours and to our children. And what I just read over here in Acts, that it's that when God reveals his Holy Spirit to us and he the Holy Spirit reveals things to us, now it becomes ours. God still has his way of doing things and his plan to do things. But when he reveals things to us, then it becomes ours. And then not only does it become ours, but now it can be multiplied and we can pass it on to our children. Amen? What, what's the important, importance of that? The importance of that is so that our way, the way that we walk, the way that we talk, the way that we move in the things of God can be something that someone else sees in our family, in our life, and said, that man, that woman, she walks after the Lord. And she is led by the Holy Spirit. And if I want those things to work in my life, I have to be led by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? That's... How do we become people of the way? How do we become Christians? How, do, how are we identified? We're identified by the way that we live. Right. There's something that's common between my brother and I, regardless of where, who we are. And our, we're black, we're white, we're young, we're older. <laughs> Amen? We're good looking, not so good looking. <laughs> and the only way that people see Jesus in us is by our way. So when someone runs into Pastor Zach and they see Jesus in him, they run into me, they see Jesus in me, they know there's something common between the two of those, the way they walk. It's the way that we walk. So those secret things revealed into our hearts, we grab a hold of those things and then they become manifest in our lives and all of a sudden we begin to walk after the things of God that we see in him and we do in each, with each other. Amen? Yeah. Well, we're talking, you're talking about individual lives. So looking at what you just brought up in in Philippians chapter 2, it's in verse 12. If if Rick's going to pull that up. It says, Therefore, my beloved, Philippians 2, verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So for years I heard that verse thinking that I had to work out my sins, right? He tried to emphasize that's the work of God. What's it say in the next verse? For it is God. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. So has anyone ever heard that? You've got to work out your own salvation and thought that meant you had to do something? You, you do, but who's going to do it through you? The whole, God through the Holy Spirit. Romans 1, 16, what's it say? For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is, it is the power. For it is the power of salvation to everyone who believes to the Jews first and also to the Gentiles. For it is the power. So see, what precedes the changes in our lives is the Holy Spirit, whether it be individual like pastors emphasizing or corporately like I've been emphasizing. 
It is only by the Holy Spirit can we do anything. We could have, you know what's supposed to happen for Back to Church Sunday in most churches? They, 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 they have t-shirts. And I thought, this is really cool. They had You Belong Here t-shirts. And we could have ordered those. And I think it'd be cool next time around to have some organization and do this. You have the t-shirts and you have the people firing on all cylinders. You get the extra people in. You're at the door. You roll it out. You've got a Facebook campaign. You have all these things and these people show up. And they show up here and you give them a hug and you tell them God loves them and let's hear a little bit of word. Can God be missing from that whole thing? Can he be absolutely missing? You bet. And that's the problem, and that's why things are empty, is because we don't, as he's emphasizing individually, and I'm emphasizing corporately, we don't focus on the Holy Spirit. We actually do not believe in our generation that God can do what he did before in Acts chapter 2. I just believe that with all my heart, that we don't believe. I don't believe that we believe the Holy Spirit can show up in this place, and you know what? He has done it. It is historically documented. He did it on Azusa Street in California. He's done it throughout the nations. He has revival. He, you can look at all these times that the Holy Spirit... But what is the underlying theme that happens in every church where the Holy Spirit shows up and they don't have a Facebook campaign? They don't. They never had Facebook. They didn't have... If they had print, it was nothing like it was today. They had no internet. They had no telephones. And most of the historical revivals that happened, what's the one thing that happened? And what happened? God showed up. So it was prayer and God showed up. And these people knew that they couldn't do it. They knew that they couldn't do it. I'm going to tell you right now, we are 100 people plus in this church. I know if you look around, you don't see people. But there's things that are going on. And, and, and we have this group of people who are not here on Sunday. But if we had everybody who considers this place home here and the Holy Spirit brought a revival like we crave, would we be able to handle it? We've got some people with us I'm saying no. Because when they show up, they don't need to show up for me. <laughs> they don't need to show up for so-and-so. They need to show up for the Holy Spirit. And He's going to bless them. He's going to move their hearts. He's going to change them. He's going to be the power of salvation. We can, we can do all these things, and it can be empty, can it? Amen. Amen. And that's what this man, man emphasizes. Every time I talk to him, I say it's every time when I speak with my brother here. His emphasis is always about what God's doing and what God needs to do. My mind, like many of you, has been what I need to do. I need to do these things. We need to do these things. But until we come to the point that we're empty of ourselves and we depend upon the Holy Spirit, guess what? By His grace and mercy, if He loves us as children, He's not going to pour out this, this, this outpouring, right? We're not ready, are we? We're not ready. And, you know, I think the, uh, the one reason why I think I say that is because you've got to remind yourself. That it, it's not you. The moment that you begin to think that it's you, you you're, you're cutting yourself short. You believe in a lie of the enemy. And I have to trust God that, that it's the power of the Holy Spirit that reveals his heart to me, reveals his heart to us. See, it's the power of the Holy Spirit that reveals his heart to men to seek his face. We can't bring revival no the holy spirit unctions us to pray and to seek god's face and as a result of that god revives a heart that's within us and like a fire that be begins to burn in darkness anything that touches it begins to catch fire as well amen so as we allow the Holy Spirit of God to come into our hearts and, keep, and to work out those things in our, in our lives, we catch fire and we begin to set fire to those that are around us. Right. Amen? They begin to, to, to come in to, to see God moving in your life. How many of you have seen people that you say, man, that guy, that woman, man, there's a peace about them. There's something about them. There's a... There's, there's a stillness about them in the midst of all of these things that they can walk in the peace of God. That the power of God is, is evident in our lives. And you desire to have that. I don't know anyone who sees the power of God in someone's life and go, I don't want that. When you see the genuine power of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer, it's there's something that's unusually attractive about that. Yeah. 
and you are drawn to it like a moth to the fire. You are drawn to that thing. Why? Because you were created to worship God. Amen. You were created for the Holy Spirit to bear witness with what? The spirit of the spirit that's in you. Right. Amen. We are spirit, soul, and body. When you depart this tent, this tabernacle, when we depart this thing, that's that's nothing left behind but the tent itself. Right. It's the spirit of God that's within us, the life of God that's been breathed in us. And when you see that thing in someone else, and you see that thing ignited. Everything in the world that can be of significance becomes insignificant when the power of the, of the Holy Spirit shows up in the life of a believer Amen. in the midst of chaos. Amen. Amen. When the lights go out, everyone's eyes are drawn to whatever light shows up. And if you are a believer, if you're walking out through things of God, believe me, there will be times in your life when the lights will go out. And the question is, will you be the one who has you've surrendered to the Lord and, uh, and allowed yourself to become a light by the power of the Holy Spirit so that people can see and be drawn to what's in you to say, I want to kindle that thing. Remember the story of the virgins? The five foolish and the five wise? What's the difference between the two? One had the Holy Spirit. An intention. Amen. To follow the Holy An intention to pursue, him. to pursue, to follow after the Lord. Exactly. An intention. We have to be intentional. It's not going to happen because you rub shoulders with someone in church. It's not going to happen because you show up to church and sit there in a pew. It's not going to happen because you walk in here and you sing a few songs. That's not going to happen. It's going to happen because you have you said intentionally, I want what you have for me, Father. And I desire for you to set my heart ablaze, set me on fire that I can walk after the things that you caused me to walk out after. And here's the deal. Here's the other part of this. Everything that has plagued me in my history that tries to, how I many you know the enemy keeps trying to show up in your life? The Bible says that Satan is, a, is the accuser of the brother. He stands before the Lord and he accuses you before God. Everything that has plagued you in your family history, everything that has plagued you on your mama's side, on your daddy's side, whatever side it may be, whatever it showed up in your life, and you say, I don't want that thing to show up in my life of my children or my family or those around me. The power of the Holy Spirit shows up in our lives and it causes us to be ready to identify those things because we've come out of them. Amen? Because we now have a right mind that's been washed, that's been cleansed, a right heart that is subject to the word of God and, and, and follows the Holy Spirit, when we see those things, we can identify them readily. Right. Amen? Pastor Zach and I were talking the other day about deliverance. That's something that the church can be kind of, I don't know about that. They're kind of afraid. But the word of God commands us. The word of God speaks of it. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's some of us, even as believers, there's things in our lives that we need to be delivered from. Yep. You're going to have to break free of those things. The Holy Spirit, the only way it's going to happen is not because you wiggle out of it or you find a key and get out. It's only going to become, it's only going to happen as a, as a byproduct of you yielding to the power of the Holy Spirit and saying, Lord, do a work in me. Amen. Well, as we close up today, thinking about how, um, I'm going to say a, couple, a few more things. Um, I'm going to try to get you out of here. Our heart here in the leadership at Oasis is we want God to show up. We want you to show up. We want you to belong here. But you know what? If you come here and the Holy Spirit's not here and we're not a people pursuing Him, you can come here and belong here and not be touched and not be changed. And, and we think that's what happens in churches. Um, I, I, I look at other churches... Um, in, in many ways and examine what they do and how they're run and that's diligence and that's responsibility but we don't have it's, it's interesting what God's done at Oasis we don't have I know he said he's better looking than me but we don't have any superstars here do you know churches are built on superstars 
Churches are built on ministries. You can have a ministry, and I know them, that they go out and they meet the needs of people and they feed people, and those things are wonderful. Who doesn't? Who wants to sit through a boring message or hear music that's no, you know, that sounds terrible? Nobody. We do need to do those things. But if the Holy Spirit is not emphasized, and if Jesus Christ is not glorified in this place like He should be, this man and I have to answer for it. And that's really scary. You know, the Word says that we have to answer for it. And that's, that scares me. And that's why, as much as we want to come together and say, as, as I've been emphasizing over and over again, we want these things to happen in this church. As he's been emphasizing individually, I was emphasizing corporately, he's emphasizing individually. We want to have this change happen in our lives. It is only going to happen by the Holy Spirit. But you know what happens if we look at Acts chapter 2? Going back to that, before they were together and all this growth was happening and being the church that they're called to be, before the Holy Spirit showed up and caused that to happen, Jesus was glorified. Looking at what he said, Acts chapter 2, verse 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And he goes through exactly what Pastor said. And he emphasizes Jesus in verse 22. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God. I'm sorry, that's not the translation. That's the NIV. I want to go to the KJ, New KJV. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did through him in your midst, as your, you yourselves also know him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God. You have taken by lawless hands and have crucified and put to death, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by them. And what it continues to emphasize in that chapter is who Jesus is. So before we can be the church that we want to be in Acts chapter 2, where we are breaking bread and we're together and we're growing, we have to have the Holy Spirit. But you know what has to happen again before you can have the Holy Spirit is you have to emphasize who Jesus is. And the thing that we have to as individuals is quit thinking that the Jews killed Jesus. I heard that my whole life. Do you know who killed Jesus? The Father, because we killed Jesus. We separated ourselves from the Lord. And because of that, He had to make a propitiation for our sins to the Lord Jesus. We have to emphasize Christ. And as we close this up, talking about where we want to be as a church, we want people to belong here. We want to grow. But we have to have the Holy Spirit. But before we can have the Holy Spirit, we've got to preach Jesus. Because as Pastor said, the purpose of the Holy Spirit is to preach Jesus. To make Him alive within our hearts and to make us changed. And, and I want to pray. Because there's some people in this house that belong here. And for many years we've been praying and wanting God to change and to grow us. And not just in numbers. But grow us in disciples for Christ. There's other people in this house who've only just now came here. And there's some of us among us here who really are not right with God because we don't depend upon Christ. We don't really believe in Christ. We don't believe that Romans 1.16, that it's the gospel that will change us. We still think like the world. It says in Ephesians that the church is still affected by thinking like the world. We think that we're going to change ourselves. There's people in this house who need to be changed. I can't do it. This man can't do it, as he said. No one in this house can change you but the Holy Spirit through faith in Christ Jesus. And I, I, we're going to pray here that it's 1204 and we're going to dismiss at the end of this prayer. Do you want to pray? And and we want you to, anyone here in this house who needs the Lord to, come, to move their lives, we're not going to be able to lay hands on you and change you. But the Holy Spirit will when we follow His commands in the Word to lay hands on people and pray with them and to hold their hand and agree with them that the Lord can move in their lives. Go ahead, sir. Father, as we listen to your word today, and 
I believe, Father, that our hearts have been pricked by the Holy Spirit. Some in greater ways than others. Some, you've pointed out things that we know that are big obstacles and others are things that just show up again and again from time to time. Regardless of what it is, Father, we desire to have it removed from our lives that we may walk holy before you. Holy and holy before you, Lord. It's your desire that we be holy. And we can't be holy if we're, if we're not whole in you. So, Father, I ask you to, to move in the hearts of your people, Father, that they would yield to the Holy Spirit, to the nudging of the Holy Spirit that desires for us to give ourselves completely to you, Father. Like the rich young ruler who came to Jesus and said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And after he went through all the things, Jesus says there is one thing that you lack and for the rich young ruler it was it was his riches but for each of us there is one thing that we're aware of maybe there's more things but there is one thing that maybe the Holy Spirit is talking to you about right now for the rich young ruler he went away sad because he couldn't give it up And because he couldn't give it up, he couldn't have eternal life either. And this morning, if you're here, and God is showing you that one thing, the question is, are you willing to give it up? Because what he has for you is so much greater than what you have for yourself. So, Father, help us. Help us to fall in line with you. Help us to get past ourselves, to get past the opinions of men, the thoughts of people, all those things that keep us from coming to you, that we may walk wholly after you. In Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, we ask you that you have us completely. We ask you that you own us entirely. We ask you, Father, that you will bring into our place here at Oasis a desire to minister, to plan, to work hard for your kingdom. But God, please let us depend upon you alone and not upon our own works. Make us a people here, Father God, ready to receive others, ready for a revival, ready for an outpouring of your spirit and your power ready for people to become true disciples because we sit back and think about all these signs and wonders, but the greatest change is for a person to become a disciple of Christ, to be grounded in the Word of God. And that's what we want here at Oasis Church, Father. And I just ask you, Father, in agreement with what my brother just prayed, that you will take us over. And that when we have this call for people to come up, that whoever needs to come up to be prayed for really will come up that we can agree with them in Jesus' name, that they will hand their lives completely over to Jesus Christ, that the Holy Spirit can have his work within their hearts. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You're dismissed. We love each and every one of you. And we want anyone who's here who has anything to be prayed for to come forward that we can agree with you. Be blessed and have a wonderful week in Jesus' name.